Those preteen and teenage years can be daunting for both parents and the kids going through them. There are probably more distractions than ever before for young people, and they can certainly keep us from focusing on the things that matter in life. Joining us from Central Pennsylvania to chat about this and more is uh, Dana Gresh. She is the co-host of Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth's Revive Our Hearts podcast and a best-selling author. Many of her books focus on mother-daughter relationships and the challenges that tween girls encounter. And her latest book is a Bible study called Esther, Becoming a Girl of Purpose. Great to have you with us today. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. You did so well. My <laughs> father-in-law, it's 33 years and he still calls me Dana. So okay. you know, you're way <laughs> ahead of him. We just met. <laughs> well, it's great to have you on with us today. Maybe give us a little brief a snapshot, a snapshot rather, of what your new book is about. What's your new book about? Well, it's about the book of Esther. We, yeah. um, we kind of at True Girl, True Girl is the name of the ministry I run for eight to 12 year old girls. And we keep the pulse on what moms are really concerned about for their eight to 12 year olds, as well as what are the cultural lies and untruths that are coming against those girls. And one of the things that we've really been concerned about is there's this sensation happening in our world that if you're not an influencer by the age of 15, you don't have a lot of value in life, right? Yeah. And that's not true. Most of us do not make our mark on the world by being influencers. It's just that they kind of get a lot of attention. So um, we were like, who is a woman in the Bible that really displayed purpose, but probably had to go through a season of waiting like these tween girls are going to or are in? Because they're saying, I don't have an Etsy page that's selling X. I don't have a social media page that's getting X number of followers. So we picked Esther because she did wait and she did have incredible purpose. Yeah, she did. And she was also kind of, uh, you know, competing against all the pretty girls and, and whatnot. So yeah, somewhat relatable, right? So where do you think most North American tween girls are at? And when we say tweens, of course, you were mentioning eight to 12 year olds, right? So that preteen Hard to believe that an eight-year-old is considered a tween, but would you say that most of them have a good idea of what their purpose in life is, or would that be a very small percentage? I think it's a pretty small percentage because here's what it, it gets down to. We live in a culture that really does think that we are the center of the world and we are our center of our purpose and we get to write our story. That's not true according to the scriptures. The scripture tells us that the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him. And so it's not just a duty to glorify God and to put our hands in his our lives in his hands, but we get to enjoy it. We really do get to enjoy it. And so there again, Esther is a great example of a girl who essentially she's trafficked, right? It's not it's not an easy book to digest and we navigate that age appropriately really well with these girls, but um she is somebody who is like trafficked. She's a teenager. She's not where she wants to be. And she's waiting. God, is this what my life looks like? What do I, and then God invites her into his purpose. So a lot of us are in a season of waiting. We're not the influencers. We're not making a mark on the world, it seems, but we're in a season of waiting for God to invite us to step into his plan, not our plan in the right time. Mm -hmm. So why did you begin writing these Bible studies for tweens? specifically. Oh, I'm so glad you asked that yeah. question. This is so important. Whether you do the Esther Bible study with me or some other Bible study, your tween needs to be in God's word. Um, many years ago, I wrote maybe 2018, 19, released a book called Lies Girls Believe and the Truth That Sets Them Free. And it has become a bestseller. Um, but while I was doing it, I surveyed 1,500 tween girls and their moms. And I was really alarmed to find that when I asked the moms, does your daughter read her Bible on a regular basis. Only 30% of the moms said yes. 70% said either no, she's not reading her Bible regularly, or I don't know. And that answer actually scared me more. You don't know? Now, here's why it matters. Um, we teach our children manners, patterns, habits before their 13th birthday, because that's when they're best formed. So we teach them to say thank you. We teach them to make their bed. We teach them to brush their teeth. These become habits for life. 
There is no doubt in my mind that the most important habit in our life needs to be turning to God's word every single day for truth. Because in our world that's so full of lies, we are going to be pulled into those lies if we don't know what the truth is. So I said then and there, I'm going to start developing tools. And one of the tools I developed was the True Girl line of Bible studies. Not only do we release Bible studies like Esther, Becoming a Girl Purpose, but we offer them as online Bible studies. So Esther online Bible studies coming up real soon at mytruegirl.com. Wow. Okay. So what makes this book or this study book series uh, different from other books aimed at tween girls? Because there's, there's a number of them out there? That's a good question too. One of the things I would say about that is that my goal in writing it wasn't for her just to do this study, but to learn to study the Bible. So we developed a system called the 4Z method of Bible study. You zoom in to find out what are the particulars? Like, what do I, what word do I need to know? And then we zoom out. What do I need to know about the city of Susa and the Israelite people and Esther and her people and all that? And then after you've learned from one section of scripture by zooming in and zooming out, you zero in, okay, God, what does it mean for my life? And then you zip it up with prayer. So we think that's going to be something girls remember the rest of their, their life, the 4Z method, zoom, zoom, zero, and zip. Yeah, no, that, that's fun for sure. So any thoughts as to when it's appropriate for tweens to start reading the Bible on their own or with mom for that matter? Okay, so here's where, let's go back to the fact that the patterns and habits that we've learned by our 13th birthday are generally the patterns and habits that we stick with for the rest of our lives. Now, there are outliers, of course, and what we believe by our 13th birthday is generally what we believe by the rest of our lives. So it's so important that it starts before 13. I know that I was eight years old when my mom handed me a daily bread, daily devotion, and she handed it to me with the expectation that I was old enough and that I could handle sitting down to read just five minutes scripture snack and the Bible verse that went with it. And so I really think somewhere between the ages of eight and 12, it's so important that we start to help our children develop that pattern on their own. This isn't family devos. This is you doing some work in God's word on your own. Mm, oh, interesting. So uh, Dana, what are the main messages in the story of Esther that you want a tween girl to walk away understanding? Well, one is, one of the lessons that she's going to learn is that God does invite us into his purpose. Um, he created us with a purpose, with a plan. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans for a hope and a future. He's talking about us as individuals there. And so she will be invited into his plan. And again, this is so important because of the way the world right now is, is if you see people on social media, their lives are perfect, their lives are grand, everything seems to be falling into place. But at home, most of us are saying, I'm kind of in a holding pattern right now. That's pretty normal, but God will invite you in. And the holding pattern and the waiting is part of the training that he has for you. I think that's a one really important lesson. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, Esther is a good one. She's probably my favorite Bible character, to be honest. Um, and, you know, Esther has some pretty big themes in it. So what conversations can moms expect to have while their daughters go through this study? Well, first of all, I want to say they're all very age appropriate. We had some age appropriate editors really work with us on how to navigate some of the you know, very difficult themes in the book of Esther. But I think one of the things that I'm really excited that moms are going to be able to talk about is the fact that nothing can thwart God's plan. So you have this book of Esther, right? And you have the people of Israel living in Susa, which is the modern day Iran, which is now not a safe place for Christians or Jewish people to live. And it wasn't then either. And when Haman, the bad guy in the book, comes up and says, hey, King Xerxes, can we just wipe these people out? He signs a decree and says, yes. Well, there was also a rule of the land that if a king signed a decree, it was irrevocable. It couldn't be changed. So here's Esther in these dire circumstances. It looks like everything is going against them and their people will be destroyed. But here's what Esther teaches us. Circumstances do not get the last say in our lives. God does. And instead of like remembering the destruction of people and remembering what happened in Susa as a bad thing, the people of Israel look back and they remember the 
party that they had. It's called Purim. They still celebrate it today to remember God's deliverance. So God always gets the last say in our lives. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you handle some of the, the more adult themes in the book at an age appropriate level? Well, there's a whole bunch of them. Let's take, for example, the fact that there was a eunuch assigned to Esther to take care of her and help her learn how to prepare to go visit the king. So what is a eunuch? Mm, that's not really a great conversation for an eight-year-old girl. So we have a definition in the book that's totally truthful, but it kind of navigates some of the um, some of the complications of that word. So we basically just say, hey, a eunuch was a person who was appointed to take care of the king's family members. And that person was a person who was devoted to never being married, but always caring for the king's family. So, you know, maybe when she's a teenager, it'll be more appropriate to talk to her about some of the delicate details of that. But we really found some truthful, helpful ways to navigate some of those sensitive issues. Okay. Uh, so what does it look like for a tween girl to live a purposeful life, sort of practically living that out? Well, I think it starts with her understanding that her will is to be a part of God's bigger plan. And that's another thing that Esther teaches us so wonderfully. So Esther is this little snapshot of the history of Israel, right? But God said from the beginning, not only are these people my treasured possessions, but these people will be the one to bring forth the Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we see in Esther's little slice of life that she's able to preserve that seed line for the lineage of Jesus Christ. So she's a really important character in the books of the in the book in the books of the Bible. We play a role, too. Now, I don't necessarily know that my role will ever be as important as the role that Esther played, but the Lord's asked me to disciple tween girls, to teach them to love their Bibles, to love Jesus, and to live their lives to serve him. And one of the things I'm trying to teach them is that this whole mentality that the world has about, I don't know, feeling like doing what we do, that's not how it works. We do what we do because we've been assigned the task of glorifying God. And for me, sometimes that get, means getting to talk to cool, beautiful women like you, but sometimes it means crunching budget numbers. And I don't necessarily love that part of my job. I don't feel like doing that part of my job, but I understand I'm part of a bigger plan to glorify God. And so I crunch budget numbers. And I think our girls need to learn that today because we really are releasing people into the culture right now who are like, I'm going to do what I feel like doing. Well, that's not how life works. No, not at all. <laughs> unfortunately. Are there parts of your job you wish you didn't have to do too? I mean, I mean, there's parts of every job I think we wish that we didn't have to do. You just got to kind of do what you have to do sometimes, right? Exactly. Um, Dana, any general advice for moms who are having troubles in their relationships with their tween girls? Uh, how can that relationship maybe be restored? Well, so parent-child connectedness, that's a term, it's a sociological term that I came across when my girls were tweens. And it basically is the greatest risk reducer to everything your heart fears as a mama. So spending time having dinner face-to-face -face three to five times a week, um, when they come home from school, really sitting down and listening, we're talking about connection. We're talking about eye contact. We're talking about making them feel like they are seen and they are heard and they are understood. Um, sometimes as a mom, I had to push the reset button on that because I was so busy taking out the trash and juggling my job and doing everything I had to do that every now and then I had to be reminded of, oh, that's right. I'm supposed to slow down, look them in the eyes and really connect. And so sometimes when I did that, I found that the relationship really corrected too. But if you're just a totally different from your daughter, don't forget the power of prayer. Don't forget to ask the Lord, help me to understand how she's different. Help me to respond to her the way that you need me to respond to her, Lord, so that her heart is molded in your hand, not necessarily mine, but go to the Lord in prayer for your daughter. Well, that is, that's beautiful. But Dana, this book of yours, it's part of a series, including Ruth, Miriam, Mary, Esther. Is there any order that you would recommend working through? They can do them in any order they want. 
Um, my favorite way, though, for them to work through is on our online live Bible studies because we put mom in the driver's seat, but we're there to coach, we're there to encourage, and the girls are connecting with hundreds of other girls across the world that are loving their Bibles, and it's so good for them to experience the fact that they're not the only ones with a mom who wants them to love the Bible. There are other girls out there who are working on that same thing. Yeah. Is it best for individuals, small groups, or moms and daughters, or kind of all of the above? We always encourage moms to be involved, but sometimes they they do it as groups. So we're always thrilled when we see a big group of moms and daughters sign up and join together. But you can certainly do it just mom and daughter in your living room or your kitchen. We do it on Monday nights, and we would love for you to join us. Check it out at mytruegirl.com. I love that. That's so fun. Uh, Dana, it looks like we're about out of time here, but thanks so much for being with us today. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. God bless you. You as well. Dana Grush is the author of Esther, Becoming a Girl of a Purpose. That's available at danagrush.com. I'm Jeanette Roche. On behalf of all of us here at Bridge City News, thanks so much for watching.